with fascinating medical news. It's called a zombie gene, a new study published in Scientific Reports on March 23, 2021, quote, challenges the widespread belief that brain activity comes to a halt immediately at death or shortly after. Researchers at the University of Illinois in Chicago found that glial cells not only come alive, but also increase in size and grow arm-like appendages hours after a person dies. While the brain neuronal genes are dying down, the zombie genes come strongly alive for at least 12 hours, a new observation that the brain does not quit when the heart stops beating. The researchers found that zombie genes in the human brain seem to come alive to clean up brain tissues after injury, oxygen deprivation, or stroke, close quote. But I also couldn't help wonder if this new medical discovery of the zombie genes that come alive after the human heart stops might also have something to do with helping the soul transition from the container body. News headlines also keep sprouting up about the COVID funding bill's 180-day countdown for the Secretary of Defense and DNI, the Director of National Intelligence, to give Congress and the American people a lot more information about the UFO UAP phenomenon. What we're all waiting for is official information about UFO advanced aerial threats and associated foreign adversaries. Meanwhile, here are recent tidbits from Fox News last Friday night, March 26, 2021, when host Tucker Carlson talked with Christopher Mellon. Mr. Mellon has been a member of Two Stars Academy, TTSA, and was a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence in the Clinton and George W. Bush administrations. He also formerly served as the Staff Director of the United States Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. Tucker Carlson asked, quote, What do you think we're going to learn from the 180-day countdown report? Close quote. Chris Mellon, quote, I think it could be profound and transformative, close quote. But he did not give details about what specific UFO ET information is coming that could be transformative. Carlson also asked, quote, why haven't we heard this before? It's a huge deal. It could change our perception of our place in the solar system, in the universe, really. Why hasn't anyone come forward with this prior to June 2021, close quote. Mellon replied, quote, it's largely been a matter of stigma and people are afraid to discuss it. You know, it's shocking. He also said, I think it's going to raise a lot of questions and send some shock waves. So there is a lot on the plate and I think it is going to be a big deal, close quote. It will be a big deal if the Secretary of Defense and Director of National Intelligence hold a press conference and finally confirm that humans are not alone in this universe and that our government has known since at least World War II that other intelligent beings have long been in Earth's sky, in advanced aerial craft and other technologies beyond human understanding. Next, the SecDef and DNI will hopefully explain what they consider to be advanced aerial threats and foreign adversaries. Military whistleblowers and experiencers of human abductions have referred to non-human alien conflicts as ancient and ongoing between reptilian humanoids, tall blonde humanoids, and a lot of different grays that are both small and tall and mostly artificial intelligence. But who plays on what team? I've talked with you before about my long meeting in December of 1999 with a Defense Intelligence Agency analyst 
who sought me out after he retired. He told me his job in the DIA was to monitor and analyze the alien presence and conflict on Earth of three competing extraterrestrial civilizations that base themselves on Earth, underground, underwater, and inside mountains. He told me the competing aliens have been using Earth as a laboratory for at least 270 million years, and that our government has solid proof of that. When I asked him what the proof was, he answered, quote, if I told you, we would both be in great danger, close quote. We need to get past that kind of restriction. But he confirmed that all three non-human groups have been in conflict about terraforming and mining Earth and manipulating DNA in already evolving primates to create a kind of worker slave for the ETs that include the current human model, Cro-Magnon, Homo sapiens sapiens. A similar extraterrestrial conflict is described by Tyler Jones from Gadsden, Alabama, after his abduction by tall blondes from the farm where cattle mutilations were taking place in 1993. Where we left off last week in part one was Tyler being shown telepathic images by the tall blonde Nordic of alien machines that levitated in the air above large blocks of limestone being moved to build pyramids. The largest Great Pyramid of Cheops in Giza has 2.3 million stone blocks and each weighs approximately 2.5 tons. Tyler Jones from Gadsden, Alabama was amazed that the big blocks moved so easily into the air when a black instrument was aimed at the stone block. What image did the tall blonde in 2012 show you that humans were making with blonde technology that could levitate stone? They were making a pyramid, and how they're making it is they had a handheld type device that humans did that the blondes had given to them. It was a flat box maybe eight inches by four inches, had a small handle underneath and would look like two rods coming out of the front and would look like maybe dials or screen on the back. And we got an image of a human pointing this box at a very, very large stone and picked it up and was levitating this block towards the pyramid. And then it handed the block off to another human. What were you seeing as the final product of all of these levitated stones? The next image was three pyramids, a sphinx, a lot of different smaller pyramids on the side. It was Giza, is what it was. But the sphinx, it wasn't the sphinx like today, with a human face and a lion's body. It looked like a lion. Maybe it was changed later. I wonder what the lion means to the tall blondes. I do not know all the small pyramids around it, all the obelisks. It was amazing. Did the tall blonde put thoughts in your mind about why they built this and what they were doing? I got the feeling that it was a type of power source. Different structures that he showed me were, I guess, landing pads for the craft that they had. Did you see craft that we would call discs or spheres or cigars or triangles moving in and around the Giza complex. Yes, I saw small triangles, maybe size of a small car, very large triangles, maybe a mile wide, long cigars, maybe almost a mile wide, small discs, big discs, floating above structures at different times of what he was showing. This was their energy base for the power that they needed for the craft and to mine on Earth. Yes. The next image I remember after Giza was more structures that they either already had built or were building. I saw another pyramid, but it wasn't like the one at Giza. It was a chest pyramid. The next thing I saw was another blonde meeting. A lot of them gathered around and 
the ones told me that they didn't want to do the work anymore. So they decided to create another being to do the work for them. They took what was here on Earth, which was humanoid, and mixed it with their DNA. I saw flashes of things that looked like human, but they weren't. They tried the first time and didn't succeed. Second time it looked better. Third time it looked better. And the last time they came out with us. They came out with us humans. Yes. Did you have any telepathic information from the tall blonde? As he's showing you these images of what their relationship is with the greys. Did they make the greys? Did the greys work for them or what? I asked them what they were. The blonde showed me an image of maybe like fish bowls with things growing in them. From what he said, they're genetically engineered. I guess they can just make them whenever they want to, like a worker thing. What were the blonde beings doing here in 2012? Well, as the story went on, as far as the beginning, they created us. But near the ending, after everything was built, they had to decide what to do with us. They left and went back to Star Cluster that he showed me, wherever they're from. And half of them thought that they should just leave the Earth to us, that we had earned the right to live. But a small group of these blondes thought that we shouldn't. You know, we were created, so we should be destroyed, and felt sick at the very idea of us being here, and that their DNA was in us and wanted to destroy us. But that wasn't allowed. They ended up leaving, left us here, and that same group of these blondes that felt sick at the very idea of our existence somehow got back here to try to destroy us. The blondes found out about it, so they come back to stop these blondes that were trying to destroy us. The bond that they felt with us was as if we were their children. They didn't want us to die. So they came back, and there was a war between the group of these blondes that wanted us gone and the group of these blondes that wanted us there to take care of the earth. And on one side was the greys and the blondes. The greys were genetically engineered. But on the other side, I saw a picture of what looked like it was the side that wanted to destroy us was also the greys, blondes, and also saw a picture of what looked like a lizard type man. How did the lizard man get into the mix of all this? The way he explained it is they're not the only technologically advanced beings in the galaxy. There are many, and these, I guess I can call them reptilians, they're like nasty, they're bad people, I guess. The blondes that broke off, they needed help from somewhere if they're going to destroy us. Uh, so they made some type of agreement, and they're working together to get rid of us. And there was a big war between both of them. The blondes that broke off and the reptilians and the greys that were with them, I guess, at the time. Apparently, the good blondes won and banished the blondes that broke off away. But the blondes, they're still coming back, trying to destroy us in a certain way. Now, whether or not that may be infiltrating our society to destroy us a certain way or plague, I don't know. But the blondes that broke off still try to this day. What about the serpent in the Garden of Eden? Reptilian. Tempting human.